Jesus. How to set me free? Living for Jesus. All He's done for me. Jesus, what is up for me? When I think of Jesus, how we set me free. I can't stand it. All night, all night, all night. Yeah, when I think about Jesus, what is up for me? When I think about Jesus, how we set me free. I can't stand it. Jesus, what is up for me? When I think about Jesus, how he set me free, I can jump, 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 all night, all night, all night, all night, all night. Yeah, when I think about Jesus, what he's done for me, when I think about Jesus, how he set me free, I can jump, 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 jump. Jesus, what he's done for me. Oh, when I think about Jesus, how he set me free. I can shout, I can shout, I can shout, shout, shout all night. Oh, all night, all night. The glory up. Oh, when I think about Jesus, what he's done for me. When I think about Jesus, we can dance. I can dance, I can dance. Welcome to Glad Tidings Sunday morning service, and boy, what a service it's going to be. Hey, a special reach out to our family online. We know you can't sit here with us in the pews, but you're in our hearts. We pray for you, and we believe that today you are going to see the working of God in your life. Amen. Amen. God is up to something. He's doing and working and putting things together. You might not see it. And you know what the problem is? We're not looking for it. So today, we're going to start looking for God to bless us. It's going to start with our praise. It's going to start with the Word. It's going to just boil in our hearts all week long. And God is going to show you and show up on things in your life that you need done. Because He is our Savior. He is our Lord and our King. He loves us. And He is a good God. Amen? Hey, I'm preaching a lot more than you guys are are responding. So I'll just go right to the announcements. May 13th, ladies, we're going to get together and we're going to have a wonderful tea. Boy, when we ladies get together, we have a blast. So our ushers have clipboards. 
We want you to all sign up. And you know, this is a perfect opportunity for you to invite that coworker or your girlfriend or your mom or somebody that just needs fellowship and a good word and some great worship. Also, Monday night Bible school, 7 p.m., in person and online. It has been amazing learning about the local church. And then also, mark your calendars, May 6th, Saturday prayer from 10 to 2. We need you to join us and be a part of it. You know what? We are moving in the kingdom, and it all starts with prayer. Can I get an amen for that? And then something really fun. Following the service, because you know, you guys, you know we're fun people, right? We all have a great time here, right? Well, following the service today, we're going to meet and greet our new trustees. So there's going to be refreshment downstairs. Don't run off. Run down to the lobby and shake the hands of our new trustees. Well, worship team, can we get our groove on? Can we get into it? When I think about Jesus, what he's done for me. When I think about Jesus, how he set me free. I can dance, 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 dance all night. Jesus, what he's done for me, when I think about Jesus, how he set me free, I can dance, 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 all night, all night, all night, all night, all night, all night. when I think about Jesus, how he set me free, when I think about Jesus, how he set me free, I can dance, 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 all night, all night, all night. let's see jump. Jesus, what he's done for me, when I think about Jesus, how he set me free, I can jump, 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 all night, and all night, yeah, let's it shout, yeah, when I think about Jesus, what he's done for me, when I think about Jesus, how he set me free, I can shout, I can shout, I can shout, shout, all, all night, You were so desperate, you were going to marry that guy. You were desperate. And God intervened. How many of you have been times where your health has been desperate? Let me see your hands. Desperate. 
How many here have had desperate times in relationships where you can't take anymore? Let me see your hands now. God delivered you. How many here had some silly talk in your head? Silly talk in your head. And you were losing your mind and God gave you peace in the situation. Lift your hand with me. Hallelujah. So what we do is we celebrate and remember what the Lord has done for us. Look at, I'm a German white guy that can't dance or clap. Impossible. Genetically, I cannot dance and cannot clap. Just point at me, say, our pastor is too white. Come on, somebody. Just say, he's too white. He can't do it. I can't do it. I'm going to celebrate what God has done in this place. I'm going to celebrate what God's done in your life. I'm going to celebrate he delivered you from drug, depression. You cried out to God. You needed that deal to come through. And God did it. Hallelujah. So just take a moment and take your awkward self and get in the aisle and begin to praise God. Hallelujah. When I think about Jesus, what he's done for me. When I think about Jesus, how he set me free. I can dance, 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 dance. Jesus, what he's done for me, when I think about Jesus, how he set me free, I can dance, 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 dance all night, yeah, all night, oh, all night I could dance all night, oh, when I think about Jesus, what he's done for me, when I think about Jesus, how he set me free, I can dance, 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 dance all night, Woo!
son's best friend in the fourth grade he cried out to God and the Lord saved this young man he came to our church in Spokane and they just found out they were pregnant with their first child oh they were so excited until they got the report from the doctor my old associate called me and said oh it ain't good so I called him and I said, look it, here's what we're going to do. We're going to fight to the end. You better hear this. Let's fight before we see the deformed child. It's still in the womb. I'd rather fight for something than I don't see the evidence. I said, let's go to war. Go to war for your wife, go to war for your baby, and let's pray and see what God can do. We did a meeting Thursday night and he came to the meeting and here's what he said. We had an ultrasound, they doubled and triple checked. There's nothing wrong with the child. It's wonderful. Now, how, how many think that brother, even if he's a Baptist, he dances? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He is thanking God. And I have an unusual faith today that you've come with something bigger than you. I've had many times way bigger than me. Even, I'm sorry to say, even bigger than my faith. Even bigger than my will. And I've just lifted my hands to God. I had an anointed leadership lay hands on me and pray with me the prayer of faith. And I have faith today. I have faith that God wants more testimonies. Now keep in mind about a testimony. Listen closely. There's first a test. And then there, there's a money. Every time there is a test. Is anybody here had the privilege of being tested? Hallelujah. But is anybody here want a testimony? Hallelujah. We're going to shift. And Pastor David is going to lead us in romance between us and the king. We're going to shift. And we're going to lay hands on you today. And we're going to believe that you're going to get through your test and have a testimony that God himself will partner with your problem, that your tears have defined you. Your heart emotionally beats off a rhythm. You're afraid to believe. You're not designed to believe by yourself. If we'll come in agreement, our Father in heaven will hear us. And there will be answers rained down for your life. Your problem isn't because you're bad. Your problem is an opportunity for God to be great in your life. You're gonna go from catechism and doctrine that you've been taught to believe to the reality that the doctrine is true. God heals, God delivers, and God speaks. Hallelujah. Glory to God. One of my children was in our front room and great call of God in their life. He said, Dad, I'm just, oppressed every moment every day I can't even breathe I said oh that's good son he said dad I'm serious I said no this is wonderful he said dad it is suffocating to me I said oh I'm so happy to hear that because what God put in you is worth fighting for and the devil wants to talk you out of it so well, what can we do? I said, well, let's just lift our hands and begin thank God. Can you come into the front room with me for a moment and I'll be the father? 
that your problems, the enemy's trying to suffocate you, but this is an opportunity for God to show up on your behalf. Hallelujah. We lifted our hands to God. And then he had to spoo some more things to me and I let him get out of his system. He said, Dad, I have a dream, but it's too big. If you have a dream that's too big today, then it can only be God. It can only be God. He said, and I don't have the money to do it. He produced a national television program. The only problem is he had nowhere to play it. And I said, use all my cameras, use everything. I'll pay your salary for three months. Took him four, that's my bitterness. And he produced this wonderful, wonderful program. It's called Second Chance. And he interviewed young people. One young man took a shotgun, pulled the trigger, blew his eye out, but he lived. Got right with God, testimony after testimony. And he called a gentleman named Marcus Lamb. Now I know Marcus Lamb from years ago. He was the president of Daystar uh, Media around the world when his wife let him. And he said, we've never done this before, but I saw your program and I'm gonna play it for you for free. No, you didn't understand that. He played it for him and charged him nothing. I missed my opportunity. How many know I should have had royalties? My business slipped. But God did a miracle in his life. And that miracle allowed his face to be seen around the world in open doors. Obscurity in Spokane with no money with hands lifted to a real God. And you are in obscurity. I wanna, I wanna say if a dream is really from God, it's always bigger than your resources. It's always bigger than your strength and your will and your connections. Because in every big dream, ultimately God gets the glory. Every dream, God gets the glory. And right now you're in a place your dream has become a nightmare because it's so difficult. I just have faith today. I just have faith. And your character and your judgments and your behavior isn't the only condition for your future. I want to tell you what your condition for your future is. Wave at me if you want to hear this. It's getting right with God right now. It's getting right with God. It's saying, God, I'm tired of being rebellious. I'm tired of being mouthy. I'm tired of, of blaming everybody. I'm tired of blaming my mom that I was born breech. I'm tired of this and I'm tired of that. And what you begin to do, hallelujah. Jesus, you're so good. Give thanks with a grateful just give thanks. All through the house, just give him thanks. Online, just give him thanks wherever you're at. Give thanks. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All through the house, I just give you thanks. I give you thanks for your beautiful people, their broken lives, their shattered dreams, the strength that has been taken from them. You're still God. You're still the living God. Yes, you're so good. It's not over. It's not over. And now, we believe in you, Jesus. Come to the graveyard of those that once believed you. What appears to be dead, speak a fresh word to it, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. So good God. I'm strong. 
you have a need today, come to the altar right now. Move out. Just come forward right now. Whatever it is, just come forward and say, God, here I am. Touch me afresh, God. I have faith. I have faith in God's goodness. I have faith in His mercy. I have faith in His grace. I have faith in His love. I, I have faith in His promises. I, I've seen Him do it over and over and over. Why not you today? Why not your life? Your circumstances aren't bigger than anybody else's. But God's bigger than your circumstances. If you need prayer today, come forward right now. Move. Just move out. Hallelujah. Just move right now. Just come forward. Stand in his presence. Many more need to come. You need to use the strength you have and come in faith. Watch God answer. Watch God intervene. Watch God change circumstances, scenario, change your playing field. Those who are against you will become for you. Those that said no will say yes. We just believe in your power right now. We believe in your goodness. You have a physical need, spiritual need. Maybe you're here today and you just say, I just want to get right with God. I just want to be right with God. I, I want the precious blood of the Lamb of God to touch me afresh. Jesus.
you hear me anyway. Hallelujah. 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 Just take a moment, just let's all together as a family, let's just lift our hands and thank God for his goodness. Let's just all of us together, let's just thank God for his mercy and his, his goodness and his grace and his love. Father, we thank you. Your presence is in your house. We thank you. Answers are in your house. We thank you. Healing is in your house. We thank you. Deliverance is in your house. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your goodness. God, I'll do anything for you. I'll do anything you want me to do. I'll change anything you want me to change, God. I just want you, Jesus. I want to please you. And Father, I want glad tidings to please you. I want the trustees to please you, the elders to please you, the deacons to please you, Father. I want the staff to please you. I want the choir to please you. I, I want this house to please you. I want to please you, Jesus. I want to honor your name. Such a wonderful, tremendous, presence of Jesus in this place I I would I would miss it and if everyone could just look at me for a second in the house just for one second just for one second if I could just have your eyes nothing matters if you're not right with God and go to heaven you, you can go to scriptures I memorize scripture all the time I just quote it but keep in mind, parrots can quote things. To be right with God is the highest position on the planet, just to be right with God. And if today you don't have to close your eyes, we're not ashamed, I'm not going to have you come forward. But you just need to get right with God. You just need to say, Lord, take over my life and forgive me. Be the center of my life. See, some of you, a few of you are just too smart, but you're not smart enough. You're really smart. You're, you have a higher IQ than the rest of us simpletons, but it's not enough and it doesn't work. And you got to have a savior and then you got to start having Jesus be your Lord. Well, what do you mean the Lord of your life? When he says something, you do it. If I hear any whim on Pastor Jody Ann, anything I take care of it I drug her to Canada do you hear what I said and I listen to her all the time she said, well I no oh, never mind and I just bring her there I just do it because I love her and it's the same with God when you fall in love with God you just say say it I'll do it I just want to please you. I just want to please you. You're here today, and you want to make sure you're right with God. No heads bowed. Just put your hand up. Just put your good, good, good response. Good, good. Let me see anybody over here. Just right, God. Good. Just, just be right with God. Let's start with that. And if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so your unrighteousness makes you feel condemned and guilty and estranged from God. So what we do is this. It's real simple. We just say, God, I'm sorry. It's not complicated. You don't have to cut yourself, offer an eyeball, pull a tooth. You just say, God, I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry. I'm wrong. Say it after me. Lord, forgive me. Come on, just say it aloud. Lord, forgive me. I confess I'm wrong. Cleanse me with your blood. Come on, say it. Cleanse me with your blood. And then say, thank you, Jesus. Come on, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. I'm cleansed. I'm going to heaven. My sins are forgiven. I have no guilt. I have no shame. I get a brand new start today. Hallelujah. And then say this with me. Anything's possible. Come on, everybody. Anything is possible with God. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Anything is possible. Praise the Lord. I can't wait till Wednesday. I can't wait till Sunday. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. This place is so, so phenomenal. It really is. I'm grateful to be here. Can I be Pastor Shot and be a little funny? 
I'm grateful to be here most of the time. Come on, everybody. You always have to throw that little, that little bit in. Go ahead and be seated. And thank you, choir. I'll have you make your way down. Hallelujah. Would everybody say with me, Holy Ghost Choir. Everybody, hallelujah, Holy Ghost Choir. Leviticus chapter 27 and verse 30. The word tithe means 10%. If this week you make a million dollars, say, come on, pastor. A hundred thousand of it is God's. But here's what it says. It says the tithe, regardless where it came from, from the land or the tree, it's the Lord's. Online, e-transfer. And everybody online be tithers. Or send it to 3456 Fraser Street, Vancouver, British Columbia. Or drop it off in the mailbox on Fraser Street. It says this, the tithe is God's. It's not yours, it's God's. That is not your money. Then listen to what it says here. It is holy to the Lord. Your tithe is holy to the Lord. When you give your obedience and your tithe to God, it's holy to the Lord. I'll say it the way some of you understand it. It's a marked bill. It's marked by God. God's signature. And I'll say it softly. If you've ever had the right CEO, he can put everything together in your business. The wrong CEO is your emotions and your feelings or what you feel or what you think. And I always see people, well, you say tithing, you know, kind of self-serving, it comes to the church. I never count the money and I don't, I don't know who gives or who doesn't give outside my spiritual eyes. I can see who doesn't. Yeah, but I don't want to look. I don't want to have to forgive people. Hello. I don't want to have to think how dumb thou art. I want to come into this house with faith. I want to come in and believe God with you. And so what the Bible says, it's holy. It's truly holy. Now, I love people from every nation, but sending money to China to your friend is not your tithe. That's sending money to China. Sending money to the Philippines is not your tithe. Should you send money to your relatives in the Philippines? Absolutely. That's a wonderful thing to do, and I commend you for doing that. And some of you, when you came from the Philippines, you were a lot skinnier. So I think it's a good thing to do. <laughs> Those are wonderful things to do, but that's not your tithe. That's your generosity. Your tithe, say it, it's holy. It's holy to God. Someone said to me, do you feel bad when widows give their tithe? No, I feel good. Because I believe God will speak to people on their behalf. I do. I do. I got to whisper and give deals to people. Hallelujah. So I stand in the pulpit today unwavering. What you're doing is holy. This is holy. If you would stand with me in faith. Hallelujah. Repeat after me. This is holy. Come on, say it. It's holy. It really is. It's holy unto the Lord. God receives it today. Father, receive our tithes. We give it from our heart in obedience to you. And I thank you. Your word is true. Open the windows, the floodgates of heaven on your people. And let them say, God, 
is Jehovah Jireh in my life. Let them see the evidence of their absolute obedience to you with their tithe in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. Let's give to the Lord. Hallelujah. Be so kind once again stand with me just for a moment I enjoy preachers with phenomenal notes stealing insightful sermons from other people around the world I appreciate that I appreciate those who go to the internet and get all the details and wear people out and throw a whole bunch of information on them. I do. I, I appreciate that. I consider myself relatively high academia. I believe in preparation. But there's a different kind of preaching that is not preached very much anymore. It's called prophetic preaching. It's based in the Word of God, but it's alive. And something that's dormant inside of you, when the prophetic preaching comes, it'll speak to the things you've given up on the things you, you failed at, and the things you don't want to look at, and God will speak to you and say to you prophetically, I can make your dreams of the past live even though they appear to be dead. I can still use your life even though you've denied me, ran from me, done your own thing, I can still use you. It's a different kind of preaching, and I am a son of the inheritance of what's called, and it's this house is prophetic preaching where it speaks to you where you live and it tells you God is bigger than what you're in hallelujah the prophetic how many of you sometime in your life God intervened you felt him you sensed him or you heard him in your life let me see your hands here's what the Bible says about y'all did you hear me, y'all? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. This is your responsibility. The pastor can't do it for you. The church can't do it for you. The choir can't do it for you. The songs can't do it for you. The preacher can't do it for you. You can do it. And he said to Timothy, my dear son. For some reason, Paul took Timothy deep in his heart. He pastored in Ephesus, which was the greatest immoral city on the planet. Every virgin had to serve a year as a prostitute in the temple of Diana. And if they conceived during that time, they took the child that was born and offered it to the goddess Diana. You think the U.S. and Canada have problems. That was evil. That was evil. And he is a half Greek and half Jew. He had a praying grandmother and a praying mother. But we never hear about his dad. It doesn't sound too good. Timothy was what's called a recluse. He didn't like being with people. The Apostle Paul came to a meeting and he was a young man and he prophesied over him. He prophesied and literally deposited in him what God could do through him. It was a prophetic word. And now in this wicked city, this evil city, the church began to grumble and they began to recognize the color of his skin. And so the Jews hated him and the Greeks hated him and the people hated him and he was very alone. And look what it says. Timothy, stir up the gift that was given to you through the prophetic laying on a hand. You better hear this. It says, fan of the flame. Fan it. 
You can't say to God, well, he spoke to me. That was there. that great, 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 phenomenal, handsome, incredible pastor that was here. That's me. That, that came from the States and, whoa, God used him prophetically. Who cares if it's not alive in you? Who cares what I prophesied over you? Somebody yell at me. Tell it to me. It'll never happen without you. It'll never happen without you stirring and fanning and believing and shouting and thanking. You've got to participate. Oh, pastor, my life is so hard. It's not hard. You could be married to her over there. You're not in the hospital. You don't have cancer. How many of you feel like most of your mental skills are still functional? Let me see your hands. A lot less than I thought. You got to stir it. You got to fan it. Well, Pastor, how do you do that? Praise the Lord, somebody. No, no, praise the Lord, somebody. Everything that have breath, praise the Lord, somebody. Then you begin to thank God. You want to tell everybody how bad people are to you. Nobody's for you. I can't believe it. You will never play a Easter violin solo at Glad Tidings with that kind of string. God will never do what he said he will do in your life if you are, oh, I thought, I, how many know white people, I need your help right now. How many know what a Debbie Downer is? Debbie Downer, just, oh, I gained more weight this month. You eat nonstop, that's why. But I got a new one. Got Debbie Downer, but I, I want all my Chinese brothers and sisters to help me right now, because here's your chance. Whining Wong. Whining Wong. My Wong Tong soup is too hot. Shoo! You gotta stir it. We're gonna take 30 seconds in this place and we're gonna thank God for your life and what God's gonna do in your life and what God said to you. It doesn't matter about your divorce, your failure, what you did wrong. What matters is what God can do right in your life. And somebody here has to stir up your faith and fan it and say, God is gonna use my life. Hallelujah. We'll try it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone new visited the church and they came to me. They said, there's a few things about this church I don't like. I said, oh, would you write them down? Go in the ladies' bathroom and there's these bowls with water in them. Come on, do it. It's so fun to be the pastor and be able to just kind of say it the way it is. Oh, I'd like, yeah, just write it all out and then bring it to the ladies' bathroom and there's bowls. And you just, shh. You know, some of you right now need to quickly write all your problems out and flush it and say, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. God's hand on me and I'm alive. Hallelujah. Tell somebody right now, say, I'm not as crazy as I used to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, I'm going to take just a, a, a little season. But it's going to be prophetic, and you've got to grab a hold of it. You've got to have a, a, a yeah and amen on you. You, you. you can't just sit there and text people and fake like you're looking at your Bible. You, you, you can't sit there and pout. I came here to be encouraged. You, you, you can't sit here in doubt. When I bring the word of the Lord, when I say something and you need it in your life, you say this out loud, preach it. I receive it right now. You don't sit there and act like that you want to know the charts of the end of the world. Uh, you you want to go to a seminar on the end of the world. I want to go to a seminar the beginning of your life, not the end of the world. 
I don't really care if Russia attacks us, if Chinese attacks us. What I care about when I'm still alive, am I fulfilling the prophetic promises of God in my life? Putin hasn't consulted me yet. If Putin consulted me, I would tell him, look at little guy, you can save money by going to the children's department and getting your shoes and clothes. Come on, everybody, hallelujah. We're caught up with things that don't matter. Today when I preach, and if something identifies in your heart, I want you to amen today. Hallelujah. Let me practice with you. Because of the blood of Jesus, you're going to heaven. Hallelujah. Go ahead and be seated in the house of the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 9, there was a nobody going no, nowhere. He had no future. 1 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 3, the only thing he had was a few donkeys. That was his inheritance. He lived in a place that was known for ongoing droughts for one and two years. Very difficult to get a harvest. De very difficult. Some of you have come from difficult families to ever have a future. You've come from difficult thought patterns to ever have a tomorrow. You come from different difficult situations. You feel like where you came from and the color of your skin in your life, there's no hope for you. That's where he was. Verse 3, his father said to him, go get those donkeys. That's all we got. And it says in the Hebrew, those few donkeys. Verse six, look what it says. There's this prophet of God, listen to it. And everything he says comes true. We'll, we'll, tr we'll try this again. We're gonna give you a chance. What God says comes true. I'll give the rest of you right now. Put your hearing aid in spiritually. Everything he says is true. He doesn't come and lie over you. If you got a prophecy in the bathroom, it wasn't a prophecy. If you got a prophecy through the mail for $50, it wasn't a prophecy. And you're carrying around demonic witchcraft, and it's not the word of God. But when a real word comes, it comes true. So here's this guy completely preoccupied over a few donkeys and God is about ready to tell him what he can be. If today you live in a place where there's no harvest, there's no future, there's tomorrow and you're hanging on to things that don't matter, I wanna let you know today everything that God says comes true. Jenny Lynn is a godly woman, all of us know that. She's done a Incredible job keeping Shashil on track. And a prophetic word came that was bigger than her education. It was bigger than her self-esteem. She has humbly served at the hospital for years, and a word came, and I knew nothing about what she did or her position, but the word was beyond her capability. And her and her husband talked about it, and a job opening came, but the problem was they're called prerequisites. And she didn't qualify, but she applied anyway. And because all that the prophetic says comes true, we'll try it again, somebody. But it can't happen if you don't participate. And she just said, I don't know if I'm going to get it, but I'm going to apply. She shield drives the old car. It came true. It came true. We'll try to, it came true. And there is a life-giving prophetic that comes true. It's alive. I've been asking the Lord, and, and you gotta understand this, reel it back. I, I appreciate those that are in their late 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 100s, and God's used them prophetically. But I've been asking God to give us the pure new voices. 
By the way, 40 isn't young, it's middle age. You're 40, you think you're young? Listen, hemorrhoid. But we got to start somewhere. And I, I, I've been calling out to God, and God is bringing me prophetic voices that love their wife, their moral, the upright, they love the house of God. And I said, let's bring them here. A new voice, a, a new sound, let's bring them to hear. Does that mean Uncle Festus can't come here and prophesy anymore? Yep. Verse 15 of 1 Samuel 19, the day before. Look what it says, the day before. Here's donkeys that lured him to a place that he wouldn't mess the prophet. It wasn't about the donkeys. It was about him being a dirt farmer, never producing. It's not about your childhood and what happened to you and laying on the couch in a, in a, in a dark room and telling your counselor what's wrong with your life. Your past life doesn't matter. God's about ready to tell you about your future. And it says this, he was lured by the donkeys, but the donkeys weren't the issue. The issue was lining him up, a divine alignment with the prophet of God. And some of you have been lured by your pain, lured by your habits, but God is lining you up with the most high God to give you a word. Everything he says comes true. Verse 15, look what it says here the day before. This is very important. God has been thinking about you. He's not looking at your problems. He's talking about you behind your back. And he's saying great things about you behind your back. And he's preparing for a word or for circumstances to line up on your behalf. I came here, this wonderful place. So many of you were phenomenal. Your hearts, a few of you are nasty, but you're changing. I serve the God of the day before. I serve the God of the day before. It's God putting scenarios together on my behalf. When I stepped into this place, I heard the voice of the Lord say, and I've had some great days in ministries. And the Lord said to me, your greatest days will be here. And I got that word during COVID. But I didn't determine if the word was true according to the health climate. I determined the word is true because of the God climate. Verse 16, the day before, listen, this is important. God said, anoint him. And you don't understand the totality of this word anoint. It literally means that God will heal your emotions. You won't have the stench of the failure of yesterday because the anointing will put a new aroma on you. Excuse me for a second. Okay, they're not getting it, Lord. Just preach it to me, baby. I'll take all of it. <laughs> Just give it to me right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let them all that die in the fiery furnace. Let the ground open up. But some of you want to step over today and say, give me a word, give me a word, give me a word, give me a word. Give me a word. God's been talking about you. Look at this thing. God's been talking about you behind your back and saying good things. Anoint him. Now understand what the anointing is for. It's not for you to be the king. It's not for you to have all the money. It's not for to have your name up in lights. Look what the anointing is for. He will deliver people. See, a lot of you have misinterpreted what God said. He spoke to you, but you misinterpreted it. You thought you would be great. You thought when you came on the platform here, the choir would sing, how great Vince is. How great he is. Huh. Huh. 
He said he'll put a spirit on you to help people be delivered. Huh? I can't all the, believe all the preachers that come to me, and I'm just going to be, I can't even be nice about it. I like to be on television. I like to be on television. And the first thing I think, we want people to serve God because you're there. And then everybody will know that you haven't heard enough to be preaching. You, you missed it. You see, it's not my ministry. It's the anointing to deliver people. It's not what you do. It's what God can do through you. How many are hearing this? It's the prophetic. I want to take one moment and go on a sidetrack. A lot of you are going to start businesses. Stop saying your business is a ministry because you will be broke. Your business is a high-level profitability, and God blesses you, and after he blesses you, you take funds and you give it to the ministry. Did you hear what I said? Well, you think because you say it's going to be a ministry that God will bless it more. No, you'll be poor quicker. I don't know if anybody heard me here, but just be poor and then you'll remember what I said to you. He delivered. Look at verse 19. Go to verse 19 with me. There's this prophet. And the word was the prophet, listen closely, will tell you the secrets that are in your heart that you're afraid to say because everybody will think you're a nut. It's the secrets God told you when you were a child and, and you were dreaming, you were free to laugh and, and believe. Now with life we get tainted. Having no produce, having a few donkeys that are lost, Saul is tainted. And he said, look it, God's been talking about you behind your back, preparing something for you, and then they have an encounter with the prophet of God, and the prophet of God says this, I'm going to unlock the secrets of your imagination in your dreaming again, and I'm going to show you who I am in your circumstances. That's all right. That's all right. If nobody gets this, it's not my fault. I'm just going to leave the pulpit. <laughs> God is going to unlock on impossible things that are in your heart. Verse 20. Oh, by the way, the donkeys have been found. No, 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 by the way, the bills have been paid. No, no, by the way, your car runs. No, by the way, you got enough money to live. Come on, somebody help me. By the way, all those donkey things are taken care of. Just do this with me real quick. Everybody saw, no, you're getting in the groove. Just do it with me. Hee haw. I'm going to take care of all of the things. The donkeys have been found. In verse 20, all the desire, look what it says, all the desire of Israel turned to you and your family. Prophetic word. He just said to him, look it, you're going to be the king. Your son's going to be the king. Your grandson's going to be the king. Well, how can I be a king when I came from the place of dirt, the place of failure? And God gave a prophetic word. Here was the word. I am going to make you a king. I am going to promote you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to do whatever you can't do. You're going to live beyond your abilities and your connection because I am the Lord God. Now, verse 21, here's the prerequisite. Here's what you have to do. Verse 21, he started humble. He started humble. He said to the prophet of God, oh, wait a minute. Can you do hee-haw with me once more? Hee-haw. 
Wait, 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 wait a minute. You, you don't understand. I'm from the lowest family, the lowest tribe. We're the white trash people. We're the people that eat our food with our hands. We're the people that nothing works out. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? He came to the prophet with humility. See, it's real, real easy to come to God with humility when nothing's working in your life. Man, you're broken. You don't even lift your head. You're just trying to make it another day. Started humble. Stay humble. Oh, it's real quiet here. You got to start humble. And you got to stay humble. We'll try it again. You got to start humble. And you got to stay humble. Had a phenomenal pastor call me and said, how's the church going? I said, these are the most humble people in the world. And many of them are very skilled, very gifted, very talented. Many of them are educated and they're smarter than me. They just haven't found out yet. And I've been amazed with the skill set here and the education here and the abilities here. But they what? Stay humble. They stay humble. His statement was this, when the prophetic word, the least of all, say I'm the least of all. No, I, I know you're in self-motivation classes right now, but let's get real. You're the least of all. You're the least of all. I don't deserve his blood. I don't deserve his grace. I don't deserve my life. I don't deserve my blessing. It's because of him. How could this be that I have been in the donkey business with no harvest and no buyers. I'm a nobody, nothing. And God, you would talk to me about deep things that I dreamt about. Things that nobody knows about but you. It says in verse 19, he'll tell you the secrets that are in your heart. Verse 20, the donkeys have been found. This word here I'm going to give you is extremely powerful. And I'm going to have to give a tiny bit of explanation. All the desire of Israel has turned to you. Just hear it again. It means this. People will envy the simple you. They will look at you and say, there is a God. They will look at your life and say, look what the Lord has done. They'll say, I got a feeling. Come on, everybody. What has happened here? How could this happen? This is impossible. It says in verse 27, stay here and God will give you a message. Watch this. When he was humble, he stayed. When he was full of himself, he left. Girl, you come to church and you're all broken and hurt and just want your life to come together, but what happens is you get a man. You get a man. We'll try it again over here. You'll get this right now. You're broken and lonely and you want a godly man and God gives you a man. And now you don't need the house of God. You don't need God. Somebody yell at me. You know what I'm talking about. And he's your third man. Let me continue here. <laughs> Stay here. I'm going to give you a message from God, but you got to what? Stay. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1. Look what it says. I'll give this to you very quickly. He poured, he kissed, he anointed, and he put him in charge. What happened here? The dirt farmer did what the prophet said. The prophet unlocked dreams that were in his heart, prophetic dreams he was afraid to even speak about. And then God pours oil on him, poured it on him, which brought a healing and aroma in his life, kissed him on the forehead. Now, I don't care what's going on. I don't care what's going on. I ain't kissing no men. Someone say you're proud of your pastor right now. I don't care if it's your earlobe. I don't care if it's your forehead. I, ain't, I, I need some men to just put your hands up with me. Say, I ain't kissing men. How many men in this place are not men kissers? Let me see your hands. Not enough. Not enough. <laughs> At least can all the trustees tell me you're not men kissers. <laughs> now, 
Then it says this, you will prophesy and be turned into another person. Let's be honest, how many of you have some areas of your life you don't like you? How many have some areas in your life that you're not very nice? And God says, when the prophetic comes, he declares this. He said, look at what I'm going to do. You're going to prophesy, and I'm going to turn you into a different person. He goes down again. Look what it says in chapter 10, 1 Samuel, chapter 10 and verse 8, but it says, wait. Here we are again. When God says not now, some of you need to hear this because you're ahead of God and everything falls apart. You need it now. You're hungry now. You're hurt now. You want to do it now. You want to show them that God's with you and you lose everything. When I get a prophetic word, I'm going to be the pastor of glad tidings and I have to wait 22 years. If my spirit wasn't right, my attitude wasn't right, I would have missed it. And you would have missed out on a phenomenal, wonderful, good looking. Thank you, Jody Ann. It says this, verse 9, chapter 10, it says, another heart, a changed heart. When you get a prophetic word, I'm going to tell you what happens. God changes your heart. You don't allow the nicks and the bumps and the people and the hurt and the betrayals and the harshness to have anything to do with your future because God's changed your heart. I'll just help you right now. He said, what you're going to do is you're going to give your way away your future by what did someone did to you in the past. You'll have only a past and you won't have a future. I want to make this announcement. Nobody has any say over my future. I need somebody to put their hands on their head. Nobody has a say over my future. Nobody. Nobody. Only God. God is the one that talks over my life and over your life. Gave him a changed heart. Verse 10, look what it says. He prophesied. He had a thus says the Lord on their life that he went to people that were broken and crushed and gave up and he had a word of life in him. How many want to be people like that where you have a new word that God gave you? Verse 11. What happened to Saul? When I got saved, I want to let you know that the beer keggers weren't as fun. Because the V didn't show up anymore. What happened to Vince? What happened to this guy? How many need a what happened to you in your life? You let your guard down, you just be your grumpy, opinionated self. Slap somebody, say, he just told you the truth. Down and mad and complaining. You want me to be nasty, yes or no? Quit complaining about Trudeau and pray for him. Huh? Quit complaining. If Trudeau Nebuchadnezzar can get saved, Anybody can. I said anybody can. What happened to Saul? Verse 13. He went to the high place. That's the house of God. There's a high anointing that God is offering this church, but you got to come to the high place. There's a high place. There's a community church, social club, or there's a high place. There's a high place where God can say anything, do anything. Hallelujah. It's a place where the millionaires dance in the aisle. It's a high place. Chapter 13, verse 8. Samuel didn't come. Oh, now he's a king and he has a little, little clone on now. And he, he has some money now. And he has... Not only donkeys, he has horses, and everything's good, and everybody bows to him now. And Samuel didn't come. And you're in a place today, and you're going to lose the anointing of the call on your, of God on your life because you won't wait on God. Somebody help me. It's got quiet in this place. Verse 10, it says that Samuel did eventually can't come, but he didn't come on your terms. 
You had no terms when you had donkeys. You had no terms when you were a losing farmer. You had no terms when you are broken hearted. You had no terms when you had no money. I told you, somebody needs to say amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And now all of a sudden, you want special treatment. All of a sudden, you're all of this and all of that. And all of a sudden, you're important. And all of a sudden, you're above everybody. Come on, somebody get low with me today. Hallelujah. I want the oil to be fresh in my life. I want God to use me. I, I want to come out of the retirement center. Yeah. I'm 88 years old and I, I, I just, they, they bring me here and, and then the senior pastor said, oh, would you come and give a word? And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Well, I remember when Pastor Shot came, there was, a, there was a move of God. And I don't know what happened around here. I don't know what happened here. They, they used to have a, a Holy Ghost choir around here. And, and, and I'm telling you, it was every age and every group, and they were Come on, everybody. Help. I don't know what happened around here. It's just another dead, a dead church. Look what it says, verse 10, Samuel came. Uh-oh. Verse 13. Would not your sons and your grandchildren have been the king forever? The same prophetic voice that says, you'll be the king, your son will follow you. The same prophetic voice. And some of you don't understand it, your prophetic voice has changed. It was for you, now it's gone to somebody else. Are you here today? I'm going to be really honest. My, many of my colleagues, many of the pastors that I prophesied with and prayed with and fasted with, I'm going to say this publicly, they are spiritually worthless worthless there's no life of God in them there's no faith in them I can't even return their phone calls and right here this is getting a little heavy if you can't say amen at least say ouch Samuel came, would of not your family. Verse 14, look what it says. And I believe God's giving a warning. I'm pulling this pulpit every which way. This thing's heavy too. I'm preaching. I'm going to say this to you over your life. Your kingdom shall not continue. Your flesh, your pride, your arrogance, your resistance will not continue. Continue. I know, I know, I know you got a big retirement. But I want to let you know there's big diseases out there. And you need God. And you went from donkeys to horses. But I want you to go from glory to glory. I want you to go from humility to humility, grateful to gratefulness. From love to love, from faith to faith. I'm going to ask you this question. Is there somebody here that wants what God has for your life to be fulfilled? Hallelujah. Is there somebody here that is willing to stand when all hell breaks loose? Uh, is there somebody here when everybody's against you and they're all lying about you? You'll say, my God is alive today. Is there somebody here that has been abandoned by somebody and thrown you away and told everybody it's your fault? Is there somebody here that said, my God is alive? Is there somebody here that will stand with me today and declare, I've got a feeling, hallelujah, that God is going to turn this thing around? Is there anybody here that will say, God, humble me, humble me, humble me, God, humble me? my life, God. I want to be humble in your presence. I, I want to have fresh oil on me, God. I saw myself on television last week, I, and to be honest. How many want to know what I said? Still good looking. Mm. 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 
Come on, guys, help me out. Just say it about yourself. Mm. Mm. Somebody say it with me right now. Somebody quickly bring me a mirror so I can just go, mm. I want you to tell three people right now, you still got it, baby. Come on, tell her that right now. Come on, you still got it. Come on, tell her right now. Come on, open your mouth. Say, you still got it, girl. You still got it. God's hand is still on you. Hallelujah. If you're alive today, somebody just say it. If you heard this word today, that God's showing you grace and mercy. Hallelujah. And there's fresh oil coming your way. I said there's, come on, choir. Come on, choir. Quickly, choir. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, wanna, I want somebody right today to dance on the devil's head. Because the last word that was said was fascinating. I found somebody else. Huh? <clears throat> Mr. Saul, Mr. King, I want you to know I found somebody else. I found somebody else whose every intent of their heart is to please. I can say it unwavering. Every intent in my heart is to please God. Do I always do it? Probably more than a lot of you, but not always. Do I say the right thing? Do I always respond right? No, but I correct myself. I slap myself real hard and I'll say, look at donkey. Hello. Better hear this today. Hear this. You're hard hearted to leadership. You're hard hearted to this. You're hard hearted to that, that you have been wronged and you haven't been listened to and you haven't been honored. I'm going to just say this to you. You're done. You're done. You're done. Oh, you'll still breathe. Sneak a few cigarettes. God won't use you. The oil keeps coming and coming and coming. The prophetic is in the house. It's in the house. The prophetic is in the house. God is in this house. Hallelujah. And how many today don't have to rely on donkeys, but you have to rely on God? You have to rely on God. Hallelujah. And Father, I pray for a fresh oil to be on the house of the people of God. Hallelujah. I pray that your lips would touch their lips. You would breathe life into everything dead in their life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Alex, come and join me. Alex, quickly, just come and join me. Hallelujah. Father, just stand up here by me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Everything that's come out of your womb, everything that you prayed for, uh, God himself is going to do miracles in your family. There's still some that aren't where they should be, but the Lord would say to you, this will be the greatest wealth of your life. For I, the Lord, your God, will visit your loved ones in the nighttime who said no to you, no to God, they'll never sue them. And they will be here with their hands lifted and they have tears falling down their face. Woman, I've heard your prayers. I've heard your prayers. I've heard your prayers. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Come on, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen to me, the shame, listen closely, the shame and the embarrassment, the utter embarrassment and the shame. I, the Lord, your God, I'm going to fix it and take care of it. You won't have to deal with it. For a million times you've wanted to take care of it, but the Lord would say to you, I am your God and defender and I will take care of it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just feel in this place right now, I just feel in this place right now, if you need a healing right now, just lift your hands to God. He is the healer. The, the healer is in this place right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I pray you would touch bodies and touch lives. Hallelujah. Those who are emotionally off, I pray in the name of Jesus, a new stability will come into their life for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. God's in this place. I said, the Lord himself is in this place. God is in this place. 
you're watching online across the nation, just get a hotel and spend your vacation at Glad Tidings. Hallelujah. It'll be worth the times of refreshing. How many of you in the last few months have repented over certain attitudes? Let me see your hands right now. Just if you just ask God, is anybody but me to have said to yourself, would you please shut up? Am I the only one? Hallelujah. Times of refreshing come by repenting. Repenting is not feeling bad. Repenting is doing what's right. Hallelujah. We have, I'm gonna, we're gonna lay hands on some new trustees, really good people. Go ahead and be seated. We shan't be long. If all the trustees and the elders, of all of the deacons, would quickly come and join me. You should have put your makeup on before. Let's just come. Come on up here. All the deacons, all the new trustees. Keep feeling this. And if the new, someone, someone, someone young right now, would you go help Uncle Nathaniel come up here? He's always going to be, his term is over, but his youthfulness isn't over. All right. Yeah, so let him stand in a place of honor. If you three would come and stand with me, the new trustees, hallelujah. And if someone would go to the nursery and get Rebecca very quickly, just go get her real quick. Uh, I'm always going to be fun, all right? I, I, um, we're going to have three Filipino ladies be trustees. How many will pray for me? How many will pray with me? Hallelujah. <laughs> you pleased with our new trustees? You pleased? You guys pleased with our new trustees? All of us together. Do we do we respect these people? I I feel this this strong thing. Um, the first time I met you was at the hotel. We didn't know each other, and I was coming here to to preach, and our eyes caught. Our eyes caught. And I heard the voice of the Lord say, this man hasn't been tapped yet. And I knew you were part of glad tidings, but I didn't know, but I knew. And he has been tapped. And exactly what the Lord, can you believe, elder, trustee, and a key leader in the house. How many would just say about Shashil? He's an integrous, phenomenal leader in the house. He is. He's a man of integrity. He's a man of God. He's someone we all look to, admire, respect. And who would imagine a young man coming from Malaysia, Indian descent, would lead, be a leader in this world church? It's just, it's a miracle. You see, God was talking about you, talking about you. And the deep things that were in your heart, you would dare not speak to anybody. It's happened. You're a very, very wealthy man. You have a wife that adores you. You have a daughter that's godly. We can say that. Um, we can, I'll be funny, and if she's not, we'll take her back to the hospital where you had her. You know, and that's how you raise kids, everybody. I'll just help you. You always want your kids to sleep, your teenagers, with one eye open at night. You know, some of you don't. I'll teach a class. Hallelujah. And I, I, I thought a lot about you, a lot about you, a lot about you. I want to say this to you, and you got to hear me. It's not a fluke. It wasn't an election. It wasn't a vote. It wasn't someone suggesting. This is the will of God. Amen. And we, you're going to see things the rest of us don't see. You're going to help us serve these beautiful people. Louisa, you're one of the finest Christian women my wife and I have ever met. A true Christian. Someone talk about religion. You live Jesus. And every time we see you, we're reminded 
Let's be tenderhearted. Let's be kind. Let's be loving. Let's be thoughtful. Um, all of us, all of us are so happy that you're one of our trustees. We're happy. She, she has to go to the Philippines for, for a couple months. She hasn't been there. She has to go there. And um, I just told her, because she was very conscientious about it. She really was. And I said, it'll be nice to have you gone. <laughs> It'd just be a nice reprieve to have you gone. And so she'll miss one trustee meeting because we figured it out. She'll, she'll make it for the other one. We, 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 is everybody here in agreement? We need them. Yeah. Everybody here. Everybody in agreement. And for some of these people, they think it's a ceremony. This is how we do it right here. Right here. And Pastor Shirley joined me and Dr. Leach joined me. Just, just get close. Just come and get close to me right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I keep, it wasn't an election. I would get someone behind her. Gary, you, you're there. It wasn't an election. It wasn't a vote. It wasn't a good idea. It's God. It's God. And I'm going I'm to tell you something that the Lord has revealed to me. Your son will have unusual favor of man. And he will get jobs and opportunities that should have never came his way. Should have never happened. But don't worry about his tomorrows. Don't worry about his ability to provide and have a life. Um, do you want me to say the whole thing? You want me to say it? Yeah, he's not a baby, he's a man. And he'll give you money someday. I see, I, no, 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 I'm not being funny. I see an anointing of the favor of man. They'll say this, this man works hard, he has integrity. And I see him getting raises and, and promotions and promotions. And someday he'll have his own office and he'll be a man of great power. I know you look at him as just a little kid. And I know that he doesn't pick up after himself and he doesn't make his bed. I know he drives the car and, and, and I, 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 know, I know he forgets about gas and I know all those natural things that a mother sees every day. I'm telling you, he's gonna be a great man. He's gonna be a great man. He's gonna be a great man. And he will love and honor you all the days of his life. This is our trustee. And we're happy you are. Father, put an anointing on her life right now. Let the power of God come upon her supernaturally. Cecile, I, uh, I've been praying for you for a few days here, and I just want to encourage you what I felt the Lord has been saying. There's been a great season of preparation. At times you have wondered why the Lord has dealt with you so severely why things have been so difficult, why there's been so much opposition, why there's been so much misunderstanding. But it is because God has been trying you, trying your heart, testing you for what he is about to do in the coming days. For the fulfillment that God has for you is greater than what you thought. You will become a teacher of men. You will raise up godly leaders. You will multiply those like you, and you will become fruitful, and you will see your life manifested in the life of these leaders. And the Lord is going to anoint you with the gift of prophetic ministry. God is going to release you uh, to touch the world, to touch the people who will affect the world. And uh, God is with you. And we are honoring you today. We come today uh, thanking God for your life. And we know that God has picked you for this season, for this time, for this purpose, that you might be a great blessing in the house of God. And you never complain. You never speak negative. But you need to hear this publicly. I, the Lord your God, will meet your needs all the days of your life. Yes. You will never be without, hear it right now. All the days of your life, every need of your life, even thoughts of maybe I need this will be taken care of. You will know 
the provision of God Almighty all the days of your life. We declare it. Church, let's stand today as we close this great assembly. We have wonderful, wonderful trustees. We have, I'll be careful. Nathaniel, thank you for serving. Thank you so much for serving. He's helped put so many things in order. Well, we get to do, we get to do this together. Um, if there's any deacon or trustee you don't like, go get forgiveness because we need unity. We need unity. Hallelujah. What do you think about the house? What do you think about it? What do you think about what God's doing? Oh, amazing, amazing. I, I'm so amazed at the wealth of deposit that uh, Belinda has. And now the Lord is just opening this well to flow out. And you never think that God realized there's so much in you. And today God is going to release you of all the riches that he has put in your life. Beautiful. All right, we're standing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a scripture I quote over you, and it's a good one. It's called, planted in the house of the Lord, you'll flourish in the courts of our God. We're going to have wonderful fellowship downstairs, a meet and greet to some refreshments downstairs. But as we close today, I thought we would do an old sacred song. Dance, dance, dance. Just, it's just an old hymn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just an old hymn. Pastor David, no, it's not. Hallelujah. Dance, 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 dance. Let's go dance out of this place. Hallelujah.